Hello viewers! Today we're going to meet Julia Mellor of The Sewell Company. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, click that bell. So today we're going to talk to Julia Mellor. I'm going to show you some of what I learned at her class at the Susubori Academy. And I'm going to show you what I experienced on the Master Brewer Tour from The Sewell Company. Um, hello viewers, uh, I'm very happy today <laughs> to be with Julia Mellor, the, um, one of the founders of the Sewell Company and a tireless promoter <laughs> of Korean alcohol for years and years. Uh, I was so excited to be able to meet her during this trip to Seoul and, um, um, and I, uh, I signed up for a tour, the Master Brewer Tour with the Sewell Company and I'm taking a class here at the Susubori Academy, and uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun. I know it. Uh, so Julie, we're going to get our brew on. I've already got my my yeah. ricey hands. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're, we're going to be doing things. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be fun. Uh, but Julia, I'm I'm really glad you uh, agreed to be on my channel. Oh, of course, of course. And, uh, it's an honor. <laughs> well, well, like likewise, likewise. Um, so to start off with. Um, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, what, what would you like um, um, my viewers who haven't been to Korea to mm -hmm. know about Korean alcohol? Good question. Very good question. I would say that the first thing to know is that the best Korean alcohol can only be found in Korea at this stage. Uh, because it is an unpasteurized drink, especially makgeolli and chongju, that really the best quality stuff is uh, found locally here. And you have to do a bit of footwork to find it, but when you do, it is so mind opening because the stuff that you get overseas is generally pasteurized or contains artificial sweeteners. Uh, here, you've got a whole different playground of stuff that you can get. So Excellent. yeah. <laughs> and uh, what, uh, what would you tell uh, people who are interested in, in brewing, but they haven't, uh, they haven't started yet? Oh, just get started. Just get started. It is such an addictive hobby. Uh, that can turn into a business even. Uh, it's really not a daunting thing. It's so simple and yet complex. So once you get started, you realize all the different things that you can do. So you're only limited by your imagination. So really just start. Uh, there's a lot of resources that we've got online. We've got like free videos and stuff to just get the basics done. Uh, and then just let your creativity run wild. Just, just have a play. It's super fun. <laughs> it, it is. I, mm. I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. <laughs> And uh, tell us about the Sewell Company. So the Sewell Company is uh, the company that we're building. Uh, Sewell means alcohol in Korean language, but it has a really deep history in uh, rice fermentation. So we really want to start getting people to think of Korean alcohol in the same way that you think of Japanese alcohol as sake, that Korean alcohol is Sewell, which is why we call ourselves the Sewell Company. Uh, but what we do is we do tasting tours, we do uh, brewing classes, we do consulting, we do just about anything there is to know about Korean alcohol because uh, we've learned so much over the last, you know, five or six years or whatever, uh, and we want other people to know it. So whenever you want any information, just get in, get in contact with us. Excellent, excellent. Well, thanks, Julia. I can't wait, to, uh, can't wait to learn more. And we will. We're going to get uh, into some back-breaking work. <laughs> Thanks again. No worries. So I took a brewing class from Julia. If you're in Seoul, you can sign up for a class at thesewellcompany.com. The classes take place at the Susubori Academy, which is located in the basement level under this mysterious pyramid. So in this class, Julia reviewed the brewing fundamentals and compared rice preparations. She taught me how to make bixalgi, which is a steamed rice flour cake. And I started the first stage of this brew 
using this recipe. I also ha helped to make bombok, half cooked um, rice porridge uh, made with boiling water added to the rice flour. And also I, I stirred juke. So um, sign up for class to see the details. Um, but I can tell you some of the things I learned from this, uh, besides the specific recipes and the brewing fundamentals, which are great, but I also learned a lot of things to adjust for the way I do things now with my current recipe, uh, which, as you know, usually I, I uh, use a juke godobop recipe. Um, here are some things that I learned. Uh, number one, uh, I should be washing my rice for 15 minutes, but not for longer. Uh, washing rice for too long is not desirable. I should just be washing my rice for 15 minutes. Uh, another thing uh, for the juke, making the rice flour, um, I should be soaking the rice and grinding the rice myself so that uh, I get the proper moisture content. And I could do a larger batch and then freeze the rice flour. Of course, when you do that, you need to sift. You need a sifter to sift the rice flour. Um, I also learned it's best after you cook the juke, it's best to let the juke cool naturally. I've been putting it in an ice bath to cool quickly, um, but it's probably better to let it cool slowly over many hours. Another thing I learned is to brew in a larger size. Once you have the recipe down, uh, it's going to be more consistent to brew a larger batch. So I need to find a larger container to brew in. Also, I learned that uh, for multiple stage recipes, um, you should be doing, uh, let's say with juke, it should be multiple stages of juke and then the last stage go to Bob. So for example, uh, for Ouyang Ju, a five stage recipe, in my previously published videos, what I did was I did juke for the first stage and then go to Bob, go to Bob, go to Bob, go to Bob. Well, turns out the proper way to do it would have been to do juke, 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 and then go to Bob as the fifth stage. So uh, that's important to learn. Now the way I did it work because the rice wants to ferment, all the ingredients are there, but it's, it's not the traditional recipe. Um, I should be saving the go to Bob for the end, for the last stage. I really learned a lot from this, from this one class it was a great experience to learn directly from an expert like Julia, who knew so much about all the different aspects of brewing rice wine. And uh, she was very generous and let me, uh, let me get my hands dirty and try, try new things. I really appreciate it. So thank you, Julia. Now I want to show you uh, what I experienced on the Master Brewer Tour offered by the Sewell Company. Now the specifics of the tour are going to vary depending on what's available that day, but I'll show you what I experienced. Uh, I got to sample traditional Korean alcohol, high-end traditional Korean alcohol, got to visit Master Brewer's house, uh, eat traditional food paired with the traditional alcohol, and uh, visit, uh, visit a restaurant with uh, home-brewed tachu. So enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you for watching. He's going to show you actually. So this is it's a very specific way to open it. But you have to be fast. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. If you do it really softly, then it'll slowly mix out. So it's a very, very showy kind of brew, uh, and it was the brew for the Blue House a couple of times. It often gets trotted out with, I think the G20 was the one brew. We, it's just because of the style. It's just, that's actually something that we just said, and then they were like, oh good, yeah, sure, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> Uh, so 
So some of them, most of them are Chongju or uh, sometimes fruit wines, but then some of them are distillation, some of them are soju. Uh, and he also is very familiar with the artist neighborhood, uh, the artist community here. So he gets a lot of calligraphers to come and do performance calligraphy, seasonal uh, seasonal performance. Out in the yard, they get like panzori and people playing music and they filter directly and they do poetry and it's all very old school traditional and it's a lot of fun. What, what's the size of one uh, brew that, that he would do? He brews fairly large. I mean, his hangaris I think are about 30 liters each time, but they're, they're different every single time. Yeah, no, I mean, there's he brews regularly uh, and does a lot of research brews. They brew on site here. He has a school just across the road from where we walked up, and that's where the wife uh, was before. That's where he does all of his classes, and you can taste a lot of his stuff. And, but yeah, he brews a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this, this here, so what I've ordered, uh, this is Newejuga Takju. So this is the home brewed stuff here on site. Uh, so this is not for sale, you can't buy this in bottles, it's just something that they have here. It tastes different every time I'm here, uh, it's just very seasonal. And she is also a master of kimchi. All of her kimchi is just so clean and actually people come from the neighborhood, not necessarily for the soul, but for her kimchi. And this is one of her famous ones, it's a, a clean radish uh, kind of kimchi. So that's, that's very pretty. Yeah. The ABV on this too is probably about 12%. She adds a little bit of water, 12 to 13%. So. Also presented old school style. Yeah. Out of the, out of the bowl. No aspartame, no artificial sweetness, none of that garbage. Just straight up booze. Because you know how he learned? So he went to some of the schools. 